I'm going to show you how to up your game with Stable Diffusion by creating entirely new art styles using merged checkpoint files. Let's jump right in. Now to get started, I'm going to assume that you've got Invoke AI installed on your computer, ready to get running. I'm also going to assume that you know how to use a model or checkpoint file. If you need help with either of those, I have great tutorials that are linked down in the description below. Now first, why would you want to use different checkpoint or model files? Well, it's because they each produce entirely different types of art, even when you're using the exact same prompt. And as you can see by heading over to Civit AI, you can download hundreds of different checkpoint and safe tensor models of entirely different aesthetics and styles. Now today we're taking it one step further and we're gonna take some of these pre-existing models that people have created, we're gonna merge them together so you can create an entirely new art style. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a checkpoint that we like. I'm going to go with this raw render. We're going to go ahead and just click the download button. Once that finishes downloading, we're going to open up our downloads directory. And we're going to look for that raw render safe tensors file that we just downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to jump over to our E drive where I've got invoke AI installed. You might have yours on C or some other drive. Click on invoke AI models and we're just gonna paste that into this directory. And you can see that I've got raw render version two safe tensors here now, and that's perfect. Now, when we go back to invoke AI, you're gonna go up to the model manager up here in the upper right-hand corner. You're gonna click add new model. Now it was a checkpoint or safe tensor model, not a diffuser, so click on that. Refresh the directory. And then you're going to see it down in the list here down below. I've already got this installed on my system, so no worries there. Once that's added, it's going to show up in your list. And what you can do is just load it for the first time. This is just going to actually set up the checkpoint file so that it can be read by the system. And this next part, we're going to jump into the command line. And I know that can seem a little bit scary at first. It's no big deal. These are real simple commands. And we're going to convert this to a diffuser model. Now, the difference between a checkpoint and a diffuser is basically a diffuser is more memory efficient. It's a little bit faster at loading. And here's the key. It's the only type of model that you can merge together. So it's a key component that we need to look for here. So once that's loaded, I'm going to go ahead and click to load a different model just so it unloads in the memory. And then we're going to fire up the command line. Now, in order to do that, we're going to go back to our invoke AI install directory, and this time the main root directory, the e colon backslash invoke AI. And we're going to look for our invoke windows batch file. Now, this is the file that you typically use to start invoke AI. So you should be used to seeing this at least a little bit. And when you open it up, you're going to see a bunch of different options. You get the command line interface, browser based UI, which is what you typically use to start invoke and a number of different options below that. We're gonna go with number one, we're gonna pull up the command line. So go ahead and type one, enter, and that's gonna pull this up. Now it's gonna take a few minutes, especially the first time you do this, because it's gonna to have to convert some of those checkpoint files that you just loaded, just so that it can load them into memory and make them usable. Awesome, and if all goes well, you're gonna be left with this invoke command prompt. Now you can type dash H, and that's going to give you a list of all the different types of commands that you can actually send to the command prompt. In our case, when we scroll down, we're going to see optimize model model name. So that's a command that we're going to be using. And then you can see it converts a checkpoint safe tensor model to a diffuser model. So we'll go ahead and scroll down and get out of this. Now we're back at our command prompt. So we're going to go exclamation optimize model. And what I like to do, because I often forget, is just go back to the UI and I just highlight and copy the name of the safe tensor file just makes it a little bit easier. Go ahead and paste that. And in this case, we did get an error. And sometimes this happens. It says raw render version two is not a legacy checkpoint weights file. So we can't actually convert this one into a diffuser. Not a huge deal. We're going to go find a different one that we can use. Just a little pickup that you sometimes run into with this stuff. So I'm just going to go back to Civit AI. I'm going to download a second Checkpoint model, I'm going to run the same process. I'm going to copy it into the models directory, and then we'll jump back into the command line. All right, we got our new model. It's XS Architecture V11. So we're going to go not optimize. We're going to paste in our model name, and now you can see it's scanning the model. This one's going to actually work. It's going to convert into a diffuser model. 
So this will take just a few minutes to complete and we're done. Conversion succeeded. You can optionally delete the original checkpoint file. I usually delete them just because I have no use for them after I've finished this process. Now we can jump back into Invoke AI. If we go into the model manager and we refresh, we'll now see that we don't have any checkpoint models. Everything is listed as a diffuser. That's exactly what we needed. Now we can go to merge models and this is the really cool part. And I'll show you why you'd want to do this first. I've got a couple models that I've loaded up here. The first one is B-Love. Now this is one that I created by taking Stable Diffusion 1.5 and training it on 10 or 15 pictures of myself. So this is how I create a lot of my thumbnails is by training a Stable Diffusion model to create images of me. So what I'd like to do is take this model and then merge it with something else. So I've got this one called I can't believe it's not photos. I C M B. It's a really long, crazy name, but I'll show you some of the examples you can get from it. So now that we've got that loaded, you can see here's my prompt that I like to use photo of beloved person pointing intricate sci-fi, futuristic, detailed eyes, best quality masterpiece, photorealistic, detailed 8k HDR, shallow depth of field, broad light, high contrast, backlighting, bloom light, sparkles, chromatic aberration, sharp focus, raw color photo. We're gonna use this for all of the images that we create today. And then I also have a negative prompt that just has deformed, distorted, disfigured, poorly drawn, etc. So we're gonna leave that in for all of these as well. Now using that same prompt, we're gonna go ahead and generate an image using, I can't believe it's not photos. Now you'll notice that in my prompt, I have photo of beloved person. Now that's my trigger in my checkpoint file that I created. It doesn't have any indication of that. So it's probably going to think it needs to draw a woman and you can see it's really high quality and highly detailed. So what I'd like to do is merge this model with the model that I use to generate my own images. So we can go to model manager, merge models, and we're going to select both of these models here. So in this drop down, you can see there's model one. So it's already got B-Love selected there. And the model two, we can go, I can't believe. So that's the model we want. And you could select a third model. So you could create a blend of up to three different checkpoint models or diffusers in this case. The next thing you need to do is have a merged model name. So I'm gonna say I-C-B-I-N-P. <laughs> A mouthful, uh, B love. I'm going to call this V1. Here we go. Actually, I'm going to make that V capital so that it's camel case and you can see it a little bit easier. This next section is alpha. So this is interesting. This is how much it actually blends the two models together and not so much how much it blends, but how much weight it applies to each model. So the best and easiest way to think about this is Whichever model you've got on the left, if you slide this over to the left, that model is gonna be more pronounced in the merged version. If you slide this over to the right, the model over here on the right is gonna be more pronounced. Typically, a good starting point is gonna be about 0.5. Now, one of the things I've noticed is that when training it on a model of myself, like my B-Love model that has photos of me, if I leave this at 0.5 or if I go a little bit higher, the images that it creates look less and less like me. And so in my case, I'm going to actually slide this down a little bit. I'm going to say about 0.3. So I'm going to heavily weight it towards B-Love and hopefully get some of that artistic style from the second model. Now, this next section, the interpolation type, this actually, you know, I even checked the Invoke AI documentation they don't even have an explanation. They don't even quite understand the differences between sigmoid and verse sigmoid and weighted sum. And they just suggest using weighted sum. So I'm gonna continue to do that. And then you can change the save location if you want to. By default, it's gonna go into the models directory that's in your Invoke AI setup. And then the last one, ignore mismatches between selected models. I always select this. Sometimes there are some minor differences that don't allow the models to be merged and other times it'll fail completely. So in this case, I'll just ignore those mismatches and we'll click on merge. Now, while this is running, you can see the little icon spinning in the bottom. If you pull open your original Invoke AI command prompt, 
you can see that it's actually doing something here. So if you want to watch the progress on this, just pull open your command prompt and it's going to say, you know, merging the checkers. It's going to tell you everything that's going on. And now it's, it's already finished. That only took maybe 30, 40 seconds. And you can see that new file has been added. Let's go ahead and exit out of this. We should have that new model up here and here it is. So we're going to go ahead and load this model and then we'll see what kind of wacky results it comes back with. Hopefully they're good. All right, that loaded, let's generate our first images with this new model. We'll see if it still thinks I'm a woman or not. So here are four of the images that it came back with. And I think these look pretty good. A couple of these need some work. My head is not an iPhone, so I don't know what's going on there. The last one, anytime an image is a little bit farther away from you, you can see that the face gets distorted a little bit. And then the others aren't bad. You can see the new lighting style. And that's what I really liked about this. I can't believe it's not photography model is that it has this really cool lighting design that really comes through and highlights a little bit differently the shadows and such in the images that it produces. Let's go ahead and do a second one here. In this case, I'm going to grab this anime model and maybe see if we can pull up some really cool anime versions of myself as well. All right, we've got the model downloaded, the Cardos anime, and you can see here I'm doing the optimization right now. As soon as that's done, we'll jump in and we'll merge these two models. Hopefully we can create a cool anime looking character of me. I'm gonna leave the balance to that alpha slider. We're gonna leave it more towards the middle. Maybe even go a little bit more towards the anime style. I think we'll get a cool result from that. All right, one more tip. If you notice that your checkpoint model or um, specifically your diffuser isn't showing up here in this list after you've completed the conversion, you might actually need to restart Invoke AI from the command line. That seems to take care of it and do the trick. So now that we've got that showing up, we can see the diffuser model down here. We're gonna merge models. We've got B-Love already selected. We're gonna go with the anime model. We're gonna slide it maybe 0.6. We're gonna weight it just a little bit higher on the anime side. Leave everything else the same and click the ignore mess matches between selected models and go with merge. All right, let's find that new model. Here it is. And we'll see what it comes back with. I'm actually pretty curious what this is gonna look like. All right, interesting results. A couple of these are kind of odd. Looks like I'm a woman in one of these. I have a robot mask on or some sort of space suit on in another. And the other two are actually pretty cool. So not bad. And you can see you get an entirely new style and it has sort of that same look as my original model. Now. I could redo this and maybe slide it back to maybe more of a 50-50 mix of the two models. And I'll probably do that just as an experiment. But you can see you can get completely new styles and designs by just merging a couple of different checkpoint models. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you've got any questions, I'm always here to help. Otherwise, we'll check you next time. Thanks.